How's it going everybody? Thank you for tuning in to Do It Garage. Today we're out in the shop and I'm going to be showing you how to do a drain and fill on your G35 transmission. It's a beautiful day. Let's get to it. As with anything you're working on in the garage, your first step is you're going to be underneath the car is going to be to get it up on some ramps or some jack stands. I have these drive on ramps. These are pretty common and these are what I primarily use. Additionally, anytime you're working on a transmission, differential, even an oil fill, especially if you're unfamiliar with the car, which isn't the case today, but you might be in your scenario. Before you drain anything out, make sure you undo the fill plug so you can make sure you can refill it. Now, I've had a lot of questions on this car after I did my radiator replacement video about where the transmission fluid filler is. And if that's what you're looking for, it's going to be right back here in between your engine cover and the firewall directly back there. I'll get you a better view in a second. Now with that engine cover removed, we've got a little better visibility here. So if you go towards the rear of the engine, and you go all the way back here, you see this right here is going to be a tube and it has a 10 millimeter attached to it. This is your transmission filler. I'll show you what it looks like once I pop that bolt out of there. Okay, this, stand, this uh, dipstick is pretty standard. It's uh, couple feet long and you'll notice on one side here it has nothing but on the other side it says hot with some cross hatches so you're supposed to check your transmission fluid with the car idling in neutral on a level surface and obviously hot and it should be up between these hatches now you might not be able to pick this up on the camera very well but this fluid does not look normally your transmission fluid is real red this looks a little brown, which just signifies it's about time to be doing this job. So now that we know we can get our dipstick out, let's go ahead and go under the car and we'll drain our fluid. I'd like to make a quick little note on my dipstick here. This car is a 2003. You can see it says Nissan Matic Fluid J. Now, subsequent to J, Nissan came out with Matic Fluid S, as in Sam. And that supersedes J, and that's what we're gonna be putting back in here today. So if your car originally took J, you're gonna to wanna to double check that, but uh, S will likely work for you. Now, before we really get started here, I thought I might touch on the theory behind the drain and fill practice that I'll be doing today. So your transmission consists of really two wear items, generally a filter and your fluid. Uh, fluid is very simple to replace. It's straightforward. It's similar to changing your oil. You drain it out and you fill it back up. Now your filter, it, generally you have to unbolt the transmission pan, the filter pops out, you pop the new one in, you put the pan back on with a gasket or some sort of sealer, and then you refill the transmission. On this car, this should apply to Infiniti G35s as well as your 350Zs. They have a lifetime filter screen. You don't have to replace it. So in this case, all you have to do is replace the fluid here. This is Nissan Matic S. You go ahead and get your OEM for this job. Now, you might be asking yourself, why should I, should I do a drain and fill or should I do a full transmission flush? And that's what I, I had the same question. The only thing is, is that your transmission has clutches in it. And as those, as your transmission operates, they rub together and some of that clutch material will get suspended in the transmission fluid. So if you do a complete flush on maybe a transmission that's got some higher miles on it, maybe an older car, then what could happen is that friction that uh, that uh, is caused by that suspended clutch material could be all that's really making your transmission operate as normal. So if you do a complete flush, you remove all that old fluid and you replace it with new fluid, which is generally seen as favorable to a drain and fill, what can happen is your transmission will start slipping. And that's where you get the old theory that I've heard is that every time you do a flush on an older car, you get uh, a slipping condition after that. It's not necessarily the case. If your transmission has had very good care taken of it and it's had flushes throughout its entire life on time, you're probably okay doing flushes throughout the entirety of that transmission's life. In this case, this transmission has been well cared for, but it's the original one with 200,000 miles on it. It makes me a little nervous to do a complete flush. So in this case, what we're gonna do is just do drain and fill 
consisting of about three to four quarts of fluid. It's just what it sounds like. You drain the pan, which has a drain plug on it, making your job easy. You put the drain plug in, you fill it from the top. And the only thing is, is that this entire system holds about 12 quarts of fluid. And we're only going to replace about four quarts of it. So you put the new in with the old and it dilutes it, but it does make your fluid better than it was before. So this car currently has 202,500 miles on it. And I change the oil every 5,000 miles. So my intent is to do one drain and fill currently, and then I'll do another one at my next oil change at 205,000, and then I'll do another one at the next oil change at 210,000. After about three drain and fills, you should have new fluid in there without having to remove any potential clutch material that might be suspended in the fluid. So it's just a way of helping to keep your peace of mind that you're not removing any of that that might be helping your transmission along while also furthering the health of your transmission with your new fluid in there. Lu better lubrication, it's gonna shift probably a little better. There shouldn't be a real noticeable difference. Uh, I know in this one, I, uh, it's always been a good shifting car anyway, so I don't envision that uh, we'll see much of an impact there, but at least we know it's being better taken care of. So that should be uh, just about it. You guys, it's up to you. If you wanna do a complete flush, that's totally fine. And if you develop a slipping condition after that, then you're really, your only option might be to add some sort of friction material back in. I'm not sure how you do that, or you're just looking at a transmission replacement or a rebuild. In this case, we're going to do a few drain and fills and hopefully prolong the life of this and see how long it goes. All right, take you underneath the car here. It's a little tight. This would be nicer if I had a lift, but if you go back to your transmission, Right back here, you're going to want to do this when your car is cool, by the way, because you'll be right up here next to the exhaust. But uh, back here, there's your drain plug right here. That's what we're going to be using for this job. Let me get you set up. Let's crack this open. All right, we'll let that drain on out. And this fluid, it uh, your new fluid should look red. And this fluid looks like more of a brown. And it doesn't look black, which signifies that it's burnt, but it's uh, just more of a kind of a amber looking brown. So it's uh, about ready to have this job done. And I did a little research on this before I took on this job. And it looks like everything I could see online showed that around three and a half quarts are going to drain out of here. The entire system holds 12 quarts, but that's including the lines going up to the fluid cooler in the front. So this should only drain out about three and a half quarts. I'll measure it before I refill it and show you guys. But uh, I bought five quarts and hopefully that should be enough. Looks like it's already starting to taper off. So I think it should. Good to go. Okay, it's been draining in for about uh, 10 minutes now and we're down to a pretty light trickle. We're going to go ahead and put our drain plug back in. For anyone wondering, this is a 19 millimeter plug. And uh, taking it off of there, it was on with about, you know, 300 foot pounds of torque. But uh, I'm going to put it back on just really tight. One of those. And I think we should be okay. It's not definitely not something you want coming out of here, but it definitely did not need to be that obnoxiously tight. I'll clean her up a little bit and go fill her from the top side. We'll take a look at the fluid that we took out of here. That is, uh, there was, uh, I mean, a little bit of residual in here from a brake job that I had done of brake fluid, but overall that's Pretty well the color this fluid was that came out. It's not black, but it's brown, which means it's used and it needs replaced. For reference here, I dunked the end of a paper towel into it. it makes it a little easier to see. Look how that's all brown. And here's the new color that we're putting in. So you can see the new stuff is just gonna provide a lot more better lubrication, better shifts, 
It's just a common maintenance item on here. Let's get to it. Now, for those of you still watching at this point, thank you so much. I enjoy making all of this content for you, and I hope that you get some use out of it. Now, I'm not telling you to subscribe, but if you did, it makes it that much easier for me to keep making this content going forward. Now, where were we on the G? So we've got our old fluid drained out of our pan here, put it into our handy dandy empty oil jug. And it looks like we did take out just under four quarts or about three and a half liters for those of you who aren't in the United States. So, I mean, if you guys are doing the same job with the same transmission, you can probably get by with only buying four quarts to replace this. In my case, it came as a set of five and I'll show you that in a minute. Here's a bit of an overview on what we're putting back in this thing. As I mentioned, the dipstick said Nissan Matic J, but uh, after this car was produced, they came out with this Matic S or for synthetic, and this supersedes the Matic J, and at least in these G35s and the 350Zs, I know this will work just fine. Now, that being said, you're gonna wanna check on yours, Nissan, if for any reason it called for Matic J, and make sure that that Matic S would still work. So we took three and a half quarts out. I'm gonna go ahead and put three and a half quarts back in. We'll just have one as an extra and we'll go ahead, take the car for a drive. We'll come back, check it with the fluid hot and see how she looks. So our three and a half quarts have gone back in, just to kind of see what we're working with here. Go ahead and put our dipstick in. Again, this is not the proper procedure to check your fluid level. I just kind of want to see what it looks like here. All right, and we are well up on the stick. The fluid looks, I mean, it's mainly the new fluid that's on the stick here, given that's what I just poured in. So let's go ahead and button this back up. We'll take it for a drive. Come back and see how our fluid level looks with it hot. Now, when you first get in your car, take it for a spin after you put your new fluid in it. What you're going to want to do before you drive off, just fire it up. And we're going to put our foot on the brake, hold it down, and we're going to run it through our gears here without letting it move, just to make sure you get all that fluid cycled through and there's no air bubbles in the system or anything of the like. Just do this a couple times and then take her out for a little bit of a drive, get her warmed up. I think we're looking good. No lights up on the dash. I'll see you after my drive. Hey, I'm just getting back from our drive. The car is nice and hot. I have it running and in neutral. I am inside, but I have the garage door open just a little bit. So let's take our transmission dipstick out and see how our levels look. The scorcher out there today. It's hot. Scorcher in here. The building makes it hotter. There we go. Okay. Well, kind of just looks like fluid all over the dipstick. Let's try just dunking it back in there. Seeing how that goes. Okay. 
That's a little better. It'll probably be rather difficult for you all to see, but uh, the fluid is right here to the top of the cross hatches on the hot side. Of course, there's nothing on the other side. So yeah, it's right here to the top of the cross hatch. We took out three and a half quarts. We put back in three and a half quarts. To me, I'd say it's good to go. We're just gonna put this back in. Put our bolt back in. And just drive it. Now what I will do is here in another day or two, I'll come back and just check it one time. And if it's if it's fine for a day or two, it's probably not gonna give you any issues until the next time you do a drain and fill. So we just torque that on, all set. And I'd say this thing is ready to go. For those of you that stuck around till the end of this video, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. And please let me know what you guys would like to see on this car. We have a lot to come here soon. I'm going to be doing some valve cover gaskets on here. The, these three five engines are notorious for leaky valve cover gaskets, especially when they're getting upwards of 200,000 miles or more. It's a 20 year old car, just one of those things you had to deal with. I also will be looking into maybe some new brakes. It has the original factory suspension on it. I'll probably put some of those on. Uh, just want your guys' input on what you would like to see. If there's any specific parts you want me to do, maybe I could uh, move that up on the timeline. Anyway, thank you for tuning in to Do It Garage. We'll see you next time.